Hi there, welcome back to Painting with Art Julie. Today we're looking at painting these white flowers, these lilies. Um, they are plastic, I'm afraid, as, as realistic as they look, but they, it means they don't droop as we, as we look at them. Um, so white flowers always cause pro people problems um, because there, are, there isn't any colour in them. So I've just worked out a way of doing this and putting a bit of a modern twist to it to produce a painting like this. So don't forget to download the instruction sheet and the cheat sheet if you need it. Okay, let's get going. Right, okay. What I've, what I've done now is I've got the cheat sheet and I've, what I tend to do when I'm drawing flowers, we're looking at drawing these lilies today, um, and we're trying to get a nice little arrangement with these. Um, and what I always do when I'm drawing flowers is draw it onto a scrap piece of paper first so I get my design. And I've done it a little bit bigger than you'd think, so it fills this. So when I put it onto my watercolour paper, which is a bit bigger, I can expand it over the edges of that. So I don't want to do um, a little drawing with a vase of flowers and some and um, some flowers sticking out of it. So I don't want to do a painting, something like that, with a vase of flowers and then the flowers sticking out the top of it because it's too top heavy. It you've got too much of a painting of a vase of flowers there. So what we're going to do is do the flowers quite big. So we do one as you're looking straight into the trumpet of the flower and then one on the side perhaps, uh, and then two or three buds just to balance the picture out and a few leaves. So I've drawn this out already onto a scrap piece of paper. When you're drawing flowers, make sure every petal comes into where it joins the stem. So even if there's one on the side, it's got to come back to where it joins the stem. Make that follow through and make sure it fits in the vase as well. So once I've drawn it out on a scrap piece of paper, I can do almost scribbling, rubbing out on there. I scribble on the back with a very soft pencil, something like a 4B, 6B, or a graphite stick, that's quite useful. And then turn it back over, put it in the middle of my piece of paper, go back over the lines, pressing fairly firmly, and it will transfer onto the watercolour paper. You don't want too much rubbing out on your watercolour paper. Um, and of course then I can extend things, it doesn't matter if bits of this come off the paper, completely off the paper here for this design. Right, so once I've got the drawing on there, we're going to start to paint. Because this flower is mainly white, as you can see from here, it has got a little bit of colouring in the back here and a little bit of colouring into the centre, but it's mostly white. What we're going to do is just put all these shadows into the centre here first. So onto the flowers themselves, we're going to put these shadows and shapes that you can see in there um, onto the paper with just a bluey grey colour. And I use a mix of ultramarine blue and burnt umber. So I'll just mix that up. So you want varying strengths of that. Ultramarine blue with a touch of burnt umber gives you a bluey grey colour. This is very useful for shadows. So quite often when we're doing watercolour pa painting, I'll ignore the colour of the flower or the plant or, or the still life grouping or whatever it is I'm doing and just mix up a bluey grey colour, put all the shadows in first and then flood it with colour afterwards. It's a very useful technique, this is with watercolours, to actually build things up in this way. So I've got my colours here, and I can start to look at the flower, or look at my instruction sheet here to see where I've put the shading, and gradually build these shadows up. So it's going to be darker in the centre of the flower, because that's where the trumpet is, where it's building into the middle of it. So I put a bit of shadow there, It'll probably come out the petals. This is just onto dry paper with a medium sized brush. Bring it up and it's got these little ridges and veins in there which help it give it the, um, the shape of the petal. If it's a bit strong, I'll just clean my brush, take the surplus water out on a bit of tissue and then just rub a, a slightly damp brush through that so it just lifts it back out again, just softens it out in some places so it's not quite so harsh and strong everywhere. So just changing the colour onto it, or changing the tone onto it, I should say. Um, so I can do that on every petal, just start to build up. Just don't randomly um, just slap it on anywhere. Just have a little think where it's going to be darker, into the centre, uh, perhaps to one side of the petal, and maybe clean the brush, 
graduate it, your shadow by just lifting it back out again, softening it back out. Some of the petals will just turn on themselves, will go back on themselves, in which case they'll be darker in the centre, where it's going into the trumpet there, and I'll just again clean my brush, dry it, soften that edge so it's not so harsh on that edge there. Soften it out. And then where the tip's coming over, it'll go back to being white here, and the tip will be a darker shade as it bends underneath here. Trouble when you're doing white flowers like this, they don't really start to show up very well until you put a background or leaves behind it. But we can, um, I'll show you that as we go. That's quite nice. It's starting to bend round with that one. So again, I'll do this one on this side now. A little bit of shadow right in the centre here. Clean the brush, dry it out, and then just soften that edge to it so it just feathers it out a bit there. And again, perhaps have the same on this one. You'll have a little bit of a shadow coming up here. Clean the brush, dry it out. It's a very dark shadow. I'll put a big blob of paint on there, so I'll just take a bit of that out so it softens it out there and just blends it back. You could wet the petal first. But with lilies, they've got these quite hard veins in there, so it's quite nice to have a little bit of dry paper to get some of those veins leading through and up through the petals. Some of these I might just put um, a little bit of wheat grey, or slightly stronger grey in the centre, but then wheat grey might virtually fill the whole of that petal on one side perhaps, and then a couple of these little veins coming up, or twisting round like that. So gradually you're building up this um, solid look for the for the flower. And I'll just put a little bit on this one into the centre there and bring it up and round. And then a vein or two coming up the middle of the, the petal. Make that go on just a little bit darker in the middle here, although we will be putting some more colours into that in a minute. So that's the one, the open flower, the one where you're looking right into the trumpet um, done with the shading. While we're doing that, after we've done that, we can look at the trumpet that's on its side here. So if you are drawing it yourself, you've got to bear in mind that the, the diameter of this one, the diameter of that one, this one's got to be the same width of it. So let's have a look at the shadows on here, and you'll probably find the shadows are underneath the lily and um, on the underside of some of the petals here. So again, the same sort of colouring, straight onto dry paper, up the trumpet, down the side of the lily, the light's probably going to be on top here, so catching the top of it. Just bring it underneath the, where the petal's folded back here, a little bit along those edges. And then underneath that petal, that's underneath this one, or if it's coming out from the inside of the trumpet, it'll be on the inside here. Perhaps flicking back a little bit there. Just giving you some shapes into the petals here and a little bit on the underside of that one, leaving some to go back to being white again. Um, the flower buds themselves, they're going to be a, quite a solid um, thing as well. They're quite a solid lump there. But again, they'll have a shadow underneath it and perhaps a vein or two onto the underside of that. So bring it down the stem and under the, the bud here. It might be a bit more shady at the tip. So again, that's a bit hard on there, so I'm just going to Clean my brush, dry it out, and just soften that edge as I go. It probably only softens if you're using the good quality watercolour paper. I'm using Bockyford 300 gram weight. A bit more shading onto that one for this one. Um, and that's quite a, a, a nice weight to use for this particular picture. And again, there's another bud here, so I'm just putting a bit of shaping on the underside of that. And then perhaps down into the stem a little way. Um, I think it'd be nice to have another bud up here. I don't know whether it was a bud or a leaf I'd drawn up here, but we'll turn it into a bud anyway, so we'll put a bit of shadow underneath that one. And the light will be coming from the top, so it'll just be light on the top there. So that's the flowers done. We could do all the leaves in the same sort of way, but it's a bit of a waste of time really, and you'll start to get a bit confused with it. So we'll leave that as it is. Um, we'll just have a little look at the vase, because that needs some of this grey shading down it as well. So ultramarine blue burnt umber down the side of the vase. Form the front rim a little way with that. Don't do it all the way across, just do a little bit 
leave a gap, put another streak down to give you the front edge and the body of the vase here. It's forming that front edge, forming that, let it just fade back to nothing. Perhaps a little bit inside or on the back edge, leave a little white gap at the front edge here to make it look like the, the rim of the, the, the glass here, the little glass vase. If you've got a bit here, you might have a little bit on the back edge as well, just to give you a bit more, and perhaps just a bit in the corner here to form the edge of the vase there. Okay, we need to let that dry thoroughly before we do the next stage. So I'm just going to pause for a moment there um, so you can catch up. And I'm going to mix up, while I'm waiting for that to dry, some weak yellowy green with cadmium yellow and ultramarine blue give me a very weak green. And then a slightly stronger um, ultramarine blue and cadmium yellow mix to um, put on there as well at the same time. Okay. Right, now this is nice and dry, we can start thinking about the colour of the lilies. The colour, the lilies are actually white, they're white in colour, but if you see down the end of the trumpet here, they're a yellowy green colour and the buds are a yellowy green with a bit of darker green in there as well. So I've mixed those two colours up, ready and waiting. So we can start off, it's probably easier for you to understand what's going on if I just do the flower buds first. So we just paint the yellow, very, very weak, cadmium yellow and a touch of ultramarine blue over the flower bud, over the shadow as well. So then it becomes part of it. Think about where the stem is going to and start to put that in. And then you get the, the slightly stronger, more bluey green. Put a bit of that in where the shadows were. Drag that down while it's still wet just to give you a bit of shaping. And again, take that down into the stem. A little bit more careful than that slap dash where I just flicked that down there. So that's one little flower bud done. I don't have to do anything more to it than that. You could, if you wanted to, lift a little bit of light out on that edge. Just again, clean your brush, dry it out, give it a bit more shape. So I'll do this on this little flower bud over here. It goes off the piece of paper, which doesn't matter for this design. It's absolutely fine for that. It leads the eye away there. Um, again, that's the yellowy green on first, and then the bluey green underneath, down and either side of that petal. Let's take it over that leaf, I think, onto that one, and then a little bit down the stem there. And again, you can always clean your brush, dry it out, and then take a little bit out if you want to. Another little bud I've got down here, so yellowy green over the bud, the flower bud here. And then while that's still damp, take a bit of the more bluey green, touch that into it, and take that back into the, into the stem here either side of that flower petal there. So I'm going to extend those um, stems a little way. I'll leave them just coming into the glass. I just want to talk about where they're going to now in, in the glass here, into the vase, because with, where the vase is, they'll go over the back edge. And when it reaches the front rim, you'll have a little tiny gap where the um, edge of the glass is, and then you can bring it down below that. So you get that natural break. So it goes over the back edge, then comes down into the glass and then just flicks away. Let's just make that a little bit more straight. So those are the buds done. Simple as that, they're finished now. The trumpet itself, we can put that in. Again, just the end of here is a very pale yellowy green. So go back over that, down into the, where it joins the stem a little way. If you don't want it too harsh like that, just dry your brush feather it out and soften it back out into those shadows. So I'm not taking that green all the way up to the, the edge of the trumpet, just a little way up the trumpet there. And then a little bit more with a bluey green just underneath and again into the stem and it can join onto the other stem there just to give it a bit more shaping. Dry the brush, take out any puddles. Um, the centre of the flower, you've got to think it's looking into the trumpet here so you can see this colour just around the centre part here. So the yellowy green onto all these petals, so into the centre and out. So make sure that's very weak yellowy green to start with. Over some of those shadowy bits, perhaps coming back over the lighter bits as well. Bringing those out so it comes round into the centre there, starts to draw, it, draw the eye in. Again, I'll just clean my brush, dry it on a bit of kitchen roll, a bit of tissue and just soften those bits out there. So you get the colour drawing into the middle, just softening those out a little bit. Just to slightly clean your brush, dry it on a bit of tissue so it's just slightly damp. 
and it will just blend it a little bit with uh, that and that just brings it in. While that's still damp I'm going to get the, the darker green, the more bluey green we've been using on, around here and just put a bit of that into the middle here so again that just blends out into these other areas while it's still a little bit damp. We will be coming in, in to put some stamens and things like that in, in a little bit but that hopefully that's starting to look like it's drawing in there. While we're waiting for those bits to dry we can start looking at the leaves. So for the leaves what the colours I've mixed up are ultramarine blue and cadmium yellow, the same bluey green I've been using up here previously but I've also mixed a strong dark green. I'll bring my very grubby palette over to you so I've mixed a puddle of the, the um, cadmium yellow and ultramarine blue and then I've mixed a, a dark bluey green, um, this is Prussian blue and a touch of burnt sienna. It's a difficult one to get right but once you've got that the right sort of shade it's a very useful dark green to use in a lot of flower painting. Um, so now with the leaves I'm going to, I'll start with one where you can see what's going on with it. I'm trying not to lean on the rest of the picture so um, I'll work over this side. A yellowy green over it first and the veins on these, you can see the veins on the leaves go all the way up. So we just try and do it with one smooth stroke up the or down the leaf there. If you leave a little white line on some of them, it just gives you a little bit of um, shaping to it. But don't get all those little white lines to match exactly. Then while that's still damp, in with a darker bluey green to the slightly more shady side of the leaf perhaps a flick or two somewhere else to give you um, a change of light, change of colour. And again, that's just a very simple way of just doing a leaf on there. Um, right, let's have a little look at this one. So a yellowy green on, on here. Now probably with this one, because it's behind the petal, I'm going to use it to show off the edge of the petal. I might not bother with a white line down the middle because it's not going to look quite right. And again, that goes on to the stem, which I haven't put on. It comes up here. We go over that leaf. So it goes up to meet the flower there. And this time I'll just take that puddle out a little bit. And then in with the darker green because it's behind there. So it'd be quite dark behind the flower itself. But that's helping to give you the shape of the flower. A lot of people start to panic with white flowers and they think they think you can't see them because you're leaving so much white. But this is where you can use leaves behind the flowers to make the um, petals stand out. So again, with this yellowy green now, I'll leave those a bit because they're a little bit damp just there. Let's do something just behind this one. I'll put in a, another one there. This might be different to my handout sheet because Every time I do this, I change the position slightly of the flower or the leaf or something like that. A little bit of the yellowy green in there first. Join it up to the stem. And then perhaps a bit of darker green. It's tucking away there. Into that, just let it run away. Just be a little bit careful on those edges. I'm still using this medium sized round brush all the way through for all this lot. So it goes back to a nice point, so you can use a medium-sized brush. It holds lots of paint then. So I think these stems are dry now, so I can start to do this leaf behind those stems. Just putting a, a paler green on first. And just tidy that up now on the one side of the leaf. Nice smooth edge leaves up to those stems on either side of it. Again, whether you know it or not, you're actually doing negative painting here. Normally if I say I'm going to do negative painting to my weekly groups, they squeal with terror. But this is just a nice way of understanding you're not actually painting the stem at this time, you're just painting the bit behind it. That's negative painting. So leave a little, I'll lose that little white line there. I think it just gets a bit too contrived then. A little bit more up to the edge of the leaf. And then we're going to just pop in a little bit of darker green as well. So that's the Prussian blue and burnt sienna. Just to it'll run to where it's damp, so it'll just help to blend that in a little bit more. Take any little puddles out. Join that one up to the stem, so that should work. Just a few more leaves to to go. Um, this one I'll just put the yellowy green on first. The slightly lighter green on first. 
don't even have to follow your pencil lines particularly, just you could make these up as you go along if you want to move it slightly and then do so onto your stem, bring it down the stem a little way, up to the petal, tidy it up before you finish this one. And then you want to make it a bit darker because they're stronger and darker than the buds. So let's make that a quite a nice strong dark. A little bit more into that one. Um, and we'll have another leaf here. It's coming up from behind that one, so a little bit more of a yellowy green here. Because I haven't changed, cleaned my brush in between the last green before I dipped it into the more yellowy green, it's gone a slightly a shade darker, which doesn't matter at all because we're going to just tidy that edge up, tidy that edge up, and then we'll pop a bit of darker green into it just at the bottom here. To make it look a bit more like it's a lily leaf. Last one here, I did put, think about putting one there but I don't think I will at this stage. This one here where it's, it's bending over the vase. We can do the paler green first. So we just think where that's going to, to the under, uh, sorry, the paler green goes on the top part, not the underside of it. So that goes straight over the top here. See if it's bending over. And then you want some of the darker green, goes underneath here, probably best wait until that's dry, I'm rushing this a little bit, go over that back edge, leave that little gap where it goes over the rim here, and then get it to join onto the stem and then flick that down into the stem there. Let's just take a clean the brush, dry it out, I'm just going to lift that edge here to give me a sharper edge down there, and that gives me my leaf bending over the pot here. As far as you probably want to pick up one or two of the greens that you've got there already, so I'm going to go back to that very weak yellowy green that I've got here and just perhaps flick a, a bit of that down here as well to make it look like it's actually catching up, catching some of the greens from the background. Perhaps a flick in, oops, a bit too far, a little flick in the background with that one. Right, so we've done most of the flower now, most of the flower on there. We just need to put some stamens on, make sure that's dry first. The stamens, if we have a look at those, they're quite long. They come out quite a long way in here, but they're just on one side. They don't go all the way around the flower. There's um, half a dozen at the stem. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, half a dozen. And a pistol, I think it's called, the middle bit. We won't worry too much about that. And they're a bright yellowy colour for this particular lily. So onto one side, probably one side or the other, I might put in a little bit below here. I'm going to put some little row of dots in here with neat cadmium yellow. Going, aiming back to go into the centre here. I might not put all six on there, just leave it something like that. And then I'm going to take that very strong green we've been using elsewhere, and you're just going to put a little bit in the middle, and then flick it in between some of those stamens. It doesn't matter if it catches that yellow and runs a little bit, just to emphasise that throat, the, the inside part of the. Um, to take a little bit off that bad the inside part of the flower there. So that's the all the painting of the flower and the leaves done, but we need something now to really show this up. And we could put a background in, and there's lots of different ways to do that. We could wet the background all over, drop a bit of colour in. That's quite a, a common way of making um, flowers show up and make them look in a situation. But I quite want you to do something a little bit more modern than that. I want you to just put a panel of colour down behind here somewhere. So once you've done your arrangement, you have to work out yourself where you want your panel of colour. Do you want it equal either side? Do you want it slightly offset? Because my vase is slightly offset to the left, I could actually have that panel just slightly offset to the right, and balance it out. So very lightly, I would just sketch in where I think I want that uh, panel to go. Make sure that some of these petals and things stick out from behind the panel here. So somewhere around there and then again where do I want it to come to on this side. Perhaps so it's just coming over that lily a little way. Bring it down somewhere about there. So once I've got that drawn in you need to be very careful now and actually measure where you want it to start. 
that uh, I've got a little line there that's that's about six and a half centimeters so I'm just going to measure that down now to make sure I get it equal if it's slightly at an angle it just won't look right so this is where we do for the first time ever I allow people to use a ruler or rule I should say to measure and draw a line so I'm just going to draw a line in here just to make that sure it's nice and straight just lightly just draw that line in there and then a measure from the top where do I want it to come to at the top here I probably want to drop it down I've got little pencil lines somewhere about there so again about four millimeters down always put three dots on if you're trying to do a straight line because two you could easily just slope it one way or the other and again just draw that line across the top here stopping and starting at the edges of the the flowers and the buds uh, where's this one I think I want it somewhere about here just so it comes out of that bud down and then again just check it just measure it that's four and a half there but yours might be different you might have put an extra leaf or two in or you might have changed it or if you've drawn it yourself you'll you've probably done it in a slightly different position to me so you can see just draw that in make sure it's straight with the side and I'll probably fade it out towards the bottom you could if you wanted to put a bottom to that and put another line across here but I think I'd like to just fade that out towards the bottom here so I'll just make sure that I'm going to drop that down a bit further to make sure I know where I'm going. I'll probably soften those with a rubber just to make sure it's not too hard, but um, I'll leave it at that for now. So what colour do you want to put in there? You can put any colour you like into this background. Um, when I've run, done this with my class recently, um, we've got all sorts of pinks, purples, blue colours in there, um, whatever, you, whatever you fancy. The blue looks a little cold. Um, the red look really rich and bold but whichever colour you do make sure you make a big puddle of it because if you um, run out after you start doing this you want to make sure you've got plenty so if you run out you'll, uh, you'll not mix the same colour up again so it'd be very difficult to get the same strength the same colour mixed up ready and waiting. so I've got a, quite a strong puddle and I've used um, raw sienna or you can use yellow ochre so I think that's very similar colour to it um, and we're going to build this up so now I've got that ready and waiting I'm using the same sort of brush and this time I'm going to go on to dry paper again um, what, I, what I don't want you to do is go on and let me just eke that out a little bit more I don't want you to paint all around the edge first if I can do it myself I'll do it like that don't do that and then fill it in because where this dries you'll get a double line with it so the way to paint for these little sections is actually drop a puddle of paint on and drag your puddle away if you're bored sloping like it should be you'll find that the little puddle will rest at the bottom of that edge and it will just gradually fill in and then you can neaten it up as you go just filling in those little areas so you get a nice smooth wash as soon as you get down to the bottom there just dry your brush and take that out so in with it I'll do this corner now in, try not to lean onto that one blob of paint so start with your blob of paint at the top here so you've got this little reservoir here drag that across so you can tidy this up as you go so don't worry if you've got you can't think I can't paint a straight line it'd be all right let me just flick your brush down and you'll drag this little bit of paint it's harder to do it with no paint than it is with just a little puddle of it and then when you get to the bottom here just dry your brush take the puddle out so I'm just going to carry on filling in these little areas here all around this one and I'll, I'll come back to you when I when I do this little bit down the bottom here because you need to just see how to fade it out um, otherwise I'll just carry on and I'll catch up with you in a minute okay so I've filled in all the bits um, which are surrounded by the either the edge of the the border or a flower petal so that's come down here nice and neatly now but down the bottom here I really want to try and fade it away so I'm just going to do this one section first of all and I'm going to put water on down the bottom here and off the bottom of the paper so I'm going to put water on just below 
um, where I want it to fade away. Take the puddle out of it so it's not soaking wet, so it's just um, a little bit of damp area. Then load your brush, do exactly the same as, you, as you've been doing before, build it up around the top edge here, tidy it up as you go, up to the rim of the vase here, avoiding your petals and things. Then as soon as you get down to that water, it's going to start to run and blur and then as it starts to run a burk, just clean your brush, dry it on your clean bit of tissue and just fade it away so it blends into it. One or two people put the water too high so it ran back into it. Again, you have to have your board tilted to do that properly so it comes down off the bottom of the paper. So Again, for this little section, I'm just wetting it down here. Just take the puddle out of it so it's not soaking wet, so you've just dampened that paper a little bit there. The same on this side. Always take your paint into the water and not the water into the paint. So you've got to do it that way around, otherwise you'll get cauliflowers and runbacks and things like that. So I'm just going to put this on here, carefully pulling that reservoir around to give me the edge of the flower. Bring it down, bring that puddle of paint down into this edge and then as soon as I hit that water, clean my brush, dry it out and feather it into that damp area and that's it. Mm -hmm.